126 volts, boy. We ain't blowing no MOSFET today. <laughs> Woo! This bad boy right here. What's up dudes, Chooch, S22 review. Now this right here is the prototype S20. We've done a ton of review updates to it because of all the feedback we've given them. Now the S22 is gonna be a refined version of this wheel right here. You can place your pre-order below. The link's below guys. If you pre-order through those, it gives me a small kickback. I greatly appreciate that. This wheel is going to be released in July. The mass production coming out to everybody finally of the upgrades, everything like that done to the wheel. Mass production in July guys. So, go ahead, put in your pre-orders below and get ready for it because it's coming out soon. Now, 3200 bucks is the expected price for it. Pre-orders are 100 bucks if you place them below. And this wheel is rad, guys. Let's check it out. Like These are the, the pads it comes with right here. So, the, these would kind of go on the side right there. And then you'd have uh, the, uh, where's these as well. They go on the side. Um, it, the other one would actually go on this side right here. But you can kind of see though, those are just, these are big and bulky and I really like just the other other pads because you don't even have to put these on there. Like these are the other fins you'd have to attach to the back in order to extend it. The other part to make it um, big enough to, to Velcro on there. But these are the Grizzla pads and they work really well on this wheel. I've tried the side pads, the side pads work really well on this wheel, and the Clark pads all work good. Um, I really like these though. These let you, let you apply, the Grizzly pads let you apply a lot of brake really high up on this wheel and it lets you really sink the suspension down on, on it. More so than any other pad. You can really, I mean you can make the suspension um, literally like you know, whenever you're going into a, a corner on a mountain bike and you get those braking, like the braking chattering bumps effect, I couldn't get that out of the stock pads. I'm able to brake so hard with these that I'm actually able to get that suspension to chatter almost because it's like I, I like to ride it loose. So if you do hear any chattering in the wheel or anything like that, when you go to brake, you might hear like a crrr, like a like a weird um, vibration. But that's literally your suspension sinking down and engaging and acting like it would on a mountain bike where you'd get that same effect back there where you're going into a corner, you're getting that breaking a bump, kind of chattering. And I even talked about it saying that it wouldn't happen on trails. But now that I adjusted it, like the suspension actually loosened up over time, guys, in a good way. So the coil actually, so my preload on here, I noticed that over time, I'd actually have to tighten my preload up and, and move it down, and you can. You have this much room in here to adjust your preload, guys. So if you're a heavier rider, you can adjust this coil way down here, and then you can, you can, you know, it'll, it'll, your preload will be higher, so it'll be stiffer out of the gate. And all this in here loosened up, guys. All the, the contact points and everything kind of loosened up over time. The coil kind of got broken in, and it really got softer um, as I started riding it. And so what I had to do 
I noticed after a really extreme mountain bike trail where it had a lot of drops in it, where the where the suspension was working hard, man, it was like an hour and a half of drop after drop after drop. And this, I mean, literally the coil in here, it's not worn out, it's just broken in now. And you just have to tighten this up. So if you do go in and you start to break and you hear like a chattering effect, all you gotta do is just uh, tighten your preload up. Just make, make the shock stiffer right here. And that's all you have to do. And if you need to do that, if it gets really tight, I even went by the bike shop to ask him for the tool and you can't fit it in here. So what you'll have to do is just undo this bolt right here. It's really simple. Undo this bolt and then swing out the suspension and then you can get the tool on there to tighten it down easier. You know what I mean? So that's that's the way you got to do it. Just literally undo the, this bolt right here. This hex head, I think it's a uh, four millimeter hex head. Undo that one, swing this out, and then you can tighten that down. But that's about it on there. But the suspension works very well. I've even, like, I literally have broken it in, and I love the Grizzly pads for your braking because this helps you sink that suspension down whenever you go to brake. With the stock pads, it's just not enough on there. Like that's just, I don't know. I like, I know it looks like, like so the orange on here is a bit ridiculous with this wheel. So, but you can get the Grizzly pads or the Clark pads or any of the other pads you want in like red or black or whatever, you know, to actually match the wheel. But this is just what orange looks like on here. And I know it doesn't look as good, you know, and it, it really kind of exposes what the thing is and like, and all the pictures and everything, those these side pads make this wheel look like the wheel, I mean, make it look unique. Like the S20, this gives the S20 the S20 look, these side pads do. But you can just see right here, this looks like the Bigode EX, um, the, the EX20S and those wheels like that. And it, it's this, all you see right here is just the battery, which is really simple battery encased in a metal housing your suspension system your motor hub and then your sim like literally your control board at the top right here and then they made the suspension system pretty much um i mean as simple as it can be guys you can just see it's it's quite simple man once you take those power pads off of there that's another thing i like it's just it's a simpler look to it get in here and see everything way easier this seat on the top i like the seat guys for a lighter weight rider it's perfect like i literally can just just chill on this wheel like and it's it's awesome it, just being able to sit down on something on the trails too like if you want to pull over and just sit down and chill you got this to just do it which is great and the seated riding on it is actually works really well um, this is the most comfortable seated seated riding wheel out there, hands down. So if you if you like seated riding, you'll love this wheel. You will love it, just straight up, immediately love it. Um, what else on here? The pedals, guys. So on these pedals right here, you can adjust them. Literally, just take these pedals and you can either move them forward or you can move them back. See that notch right there? It's in the back right there, and Moving them forward, it's just going to give you way more torque and acceleration um, for climbing hills, going, you know, accelerating faster. But with them in the back position like this, it helps so much with going down those rocky descents where you're leaning back and it's like, oh shit, you're hitting rocks and roots going down the descent. These help a lot with that. And it, just be, having it pushed back is, is the way you want it. it. It seriously is the way you want it. And I never really thought about that before I got this wheel or, eat, or rode a wheel with pedals where you could adjust them like this but I see exactly what they're good for and what they're not good for um, they're having them in the back position like this if you're trying to do a uh, trail ride where there's steep inclines where it's just like corner after corner where you're just going with not a lot of speed and you're trying to like turn at like a switchback or something and then go up it having the pedals back like this is terrible because you just have no torque there. You can't get enough weight on the front of your toes to get up the daggum hill. So just moving them forward will, will change all that 100%. And this is the 126 volt wheel, guys. So 
I mean, it has tons of power and tons of torque, but it's just not set up with the pedals in the, in the back position like this to offer that torque or that power. But it has insane braking with them like this. You can really brake like crazy. I love the wheel, dude. I love it. I think it's a great wheel. I think it looks good. I think it rides smooth. The tire on it, the stock tire is great. Goes over everything. The rim is extremely robust. That's one thing I love about the, the this wheel is it's just robust, man. Riding it, you can tank over anything and everything. Now, and I crashed it a few times, and I didn't even have a problem with this messing up. And I know that people had a problem with this beforehand. And this is already broken, and I crashed on it at least three times pretty hard, and it didn't even break or mess up. So I don't know what people were doing to this beforehand to mess it up so bad. Um... I think a lot of the demos just had a bad case of people <laughs> of just people getting on it and this is a wheel you have to get used to dude you have to get used to this wheel and I think a lot of people didn't have the time to ride it uh, a lot of people have other obligations and I this is the first time I seriously was able to test the demo hard it's the first time I I, I literally have had a ton of free time to devote to this and I don't think anybody else has put as many miles on an S20 in the window of time in which I've had this one. I've literally been on this thing every day, all day, riding it nonstop, and I love it. I don't, want, I don't want to send it back, dude. I don't want to send it back to Yuko. I think the UPS man's about to come right now, actually, and I'm trying to get in the last little bit of video I can for you guys because it is such a sick wheel. I literally went out just for a ride on it just a minute ago before I'm having to send it back. But man, I love I love it. I know this one doesn't look that great because it's been rode and, and beat up and has the wrong power pads on it. But this is kind of what you can expect if you want to change up your power pads and what it'll look like after you ride it hard for like a year. Because that that's relatively what um, me riding it and then the demo riders ripping around on it you know that's probably what what yours is going to look like in about a year of riding it so that's the s20 the kickstand is the one thing i did break on it guys i'm going to be completely transparent with you on that and with and with yuko you know this is their wheel so the kickstand on the back i landed and um coming down i hit a root or rock or something and it literally broke the kickstand off the back. The whole bracket right there literally broke. It hit so hard. And I left the one side on there so it retains the fender on the back, but it completely shattered the whole little foot. The whole little foot, the kickstand. The rest of it's on the trail somewhere. I don't know where. Look at this. So this, you, with this, you just like, if you want to pick up the wheel, this is how you do it. You flip this down, see how the wheel is engaged? This is actually pretty cool. You open it up like that, it disengages the wheel, and you can pick it up without it doing a burnout. Put it back down, it re-engages the wheel, you're good to go. Now you put your seat on there. That could be, um, honestly dude, if you wanted to even go in and put some like um, some of that adhesive, what is it, um, six thousand adhesive, whatever the hell it is, um, and put like magnets under here, dude. I think that's the way to go. Like literally, get some neodymium magnets and glue like four really high-powered ones under here, and then four on the top of this, and you can just like click, like click, click it down on there. And I think that's the way to go. Uh, I don't. The seat's really nice, but the mechanism in which they've attached the seat to the thing is just ridiculously stupid. Um, the Velcro is not going to work in cold climates because it gets so cold that the Velcro does not work, dude. Velcro in cold climate is not a good thing, man. Like, it's amazing. The power pads stay on relatively good sometimes, but it was really cold one day. And my power pads completely came off, dude, because my Velcro froze. Like, the back part of the Velcro froze. And it just completely came off. And so having the Velcro up here on the seat is just kind of stupid. I think we need to see more magnets everywhere, bro. Where, where they can put magnets for stuff, 
magnets are cool as shit. I like magnets. Uh, like this on the back, this magnetic thing, that's pretty cool. We need magnets like on the seat right here next. That'd be awesome. We could just go pull it off easy and then click, pop that thing down. But power wise, I think there, the power's there guys. Has plenty of power. I think the range is there guys. I, I, I wouldn't worry about that. The build quality. Um, there's a few things on here that are afterthoughts. I think they built the wheel and then the afterthoughts are this guys so like every, the whole the whole design and everything that actually needs to be good on it is good on this wheel the afterthoughts were the kickstand they didn't think that through that was completely stupid that's why I, I removed it right here it even looks better with the kickstand removed I think it really does look better with the kickstand off and then um, some people complain about the headlights the headlights are not a problem guys they're they're solid um, on the front right here, like on the front of the headlight, um, it's 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 nice. And so you can literally see how there's just a hex bolt up here, and you can just tighten that and loosen it, and then you can change if your angle of them. Uh, the front of the headlight is really solid, nice. The only thing on the side is just uh, the way the plastic flares out, and that's not a problem at all. The build quality on the lights is actually nice, and like it just doesn't seem like it from from a video but in person they're fine but you need for performance and riding suspension the batteries the acceleration the power uh the pedals you get the spike pedals are huge they're nice um the rim is solid well built on here the tire is a three ply tire that keeps this the rim um from getting uh, even remotely damaged in any situation the suspension is going to keep the rim from getting damaged ever. That's one thing you'll never have to worry about on this wheel. It has an extremely powerful 3300 watt motor in it. Um, the suspension system can be easily washed out with a water hose or either just hit your next jump and it'll fling the mud out of there. Uh, all the components in here seem quite nice. There's no exposed cables really other than your headlight cables, which that doesn't matter guys. And then this motor cable under here is fully wrapped in a spring wire system um, and it's going to keep this thing nice and, and where it's not going to get damaged and this has to be like this so it can move up and down under here you got two charging ports these are upside down and i've even forgotten to put the covers on and then went in mud riding having them upside down is a pain in the butt the first day you get it it's going to be like what how do you how do you get the truck after the first day dude it's gonna be easy it's just like you plug it in no problem you're not even gonna worry about it um, and having them upside down like that does serve a purpose all the mud or dirt or anything if you forget and you leave these caps open uh, like I do sometimes all the dirt and water drains downward out of it so it's not gonna pull up in there and cause a short or something like that over time so that's great the way those are set up I've had a total blast on this wheel.
they did. This was set up by the guys in New York. If it was up to me, I'd put the Velcro over the entire thing, and then I could run the aftermarket pads like these Grizzly pads right here. I love these Grizzly pads, the Clark pads, the side pads, or either these would just stick on better. But that's just how you set it up. And so you see the pads really give it a lot of the look. They really do. You see, it, it, it works, it makes sense. But the Grizzly pads, one thing I noticed immediately is how much I like those Grizzly pads for the brake. Because those are the pads I was just riding before, swap, swapping them now. Uh, not really any aftermarket pads you could put. It'd be ideal to make, um, if you guys out there that 3D print these pads, to 3D print a pad that could fit under here. They could use this as a buffer, you know, because that's nice to have that in there so you could really yank up on it when you go to jump. But that's it, guys. Just wanted to show you all a close-up of it. So, King Song S20, all in all, no. Everything on this wheel that needs to be built well is built well. You have, starting from the pedals, you have extremely, extremely high quality pedals, guys. These are, are, are nice. For a stock pedals on electric unicycle, these are probably the nicest out there I've seen so far. The d -Goat Hero has some really good ones, too. I've seen those. The spikes on these are aggressive enough uh, for most people. Whenever they do get wet, I do want some thicker spikes though. So these are, are great, even though they are pretty aggressive spikes. When they get wet, I want more aggressive spikes. The batteries are in here. This is a full encasement of batteries. Not much to say about that. On the other side, there's two pillars in there that slide for your suspension mechanism. Your suspension mechanism on the back is extremely beefy and well built. After even crashing it a few times, nothing bent back here, guys. I thought that I did bend something back here after a ride because my suspension wasn't resetting all the way up. It wasn't coming all the way back up. One thing I did notice, though, I was riding down extreme mountain bike trails, like Black Diamond mountain bike trails, and coming down insane descents, guys. And it was, I was riding for three hours, and it literally pushed this thing up. After every jump and bump, it made this... Um, Thing, work its way up these threads here um, it didn't do it in a bad way or strip it it just loosened over time it literally just loosened up over time from where I had it and my spring was just way looser at the end of the ride so that's one thing that's kind of weird and I wouldn't suggest putting blue Loctite on this but if that's one thing if you're riding extreme trails and this thing's backing out on you maybe a little Loctite on this wouldn't be a bad idea I know that's weird to say on the suspension but I was riding so hard that I was making the thing move up. And I thought at the end of it, I was like, man, is this something been in it? No, it was, everything's fine. Everything's completely fine in here. Um, you see, now that I got it tightened up, everything's fine. It works great. It works perfectly fine now. But um, it was just because it loosened up a little, or yeah, it just loosened up a little bit. But the suspension, the rim, the motor, the batteries, and the main in integral build are completely solid he dude i can get it like 46 miles an hour no problem it rips dude things fast it's fun rides good and everything on it that needs to be solid and well built is well built the afterthought things are just that they're afterthought things that kind of suck on it but that's what you got to deal with but anyways it's been shoot if y'all enjoyed the video throw it a thumbs up and i will see you dudes in the next one